You know, I'm really surprised that no matter what I try to talk about, I can't help but get a significant amount of negative attention around the video or around the discussion on the comments. And the last video introducing ducks and their effects, I just decided to do these tests because I haven't found any real life tests. I found bench tests and things, but that's not real life testing of ducts and these systems. And what I'm doing is not even backyard science at its best. It's, it's just nothingness. It's just a very rough test. And it's just to get kind of an idea of what's going on. And along those lines, I would say that a lot of people made some comments in the previous video that did make a lot of sense that I absolutely did not think about. First of which being why the quad actually increased altitude when uh, it only had ducts on one side with the throttle all the way down. And while I would assume it's because of the duct effect, because I am, I've done testing before and I know that the ducts do actually generate more thrust, uh, but that's arguable with the ducts on one side. Some people commented that it could have been air mode, which it's not, I, I know it's not. I turned it off and tried it again, it still does it. And it could also be deflutter which very well could be definitely. But with the more modern code, deflutter doesn't quite happen so much. And if you've been around the hobby a bit, you know that back in the day we had quads that would just kind of like vibrate themselves up into the sky. And based on what I was hearing, what I was seeing, what I was feeling in the quad, my direct observation, I don't believe that's what it was. But that doesn't even matter because let's move a step further and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, people were even debating whether these ducts even work like ducts, which I agree, these are not perfect ducts. I mean, there is spacing between the, the prop and the duct. No matter what I do, there will be some spacing there. It will not be a perfect duct. And you don't get the entire, the full benefit of having the duct when you have that spacing there. But if you take a look at the video in the link in the description, you can clearly see that ducts do something even when they're sloppy and not perfect, especially on tiny whoops. Now, it doesn't directly correlate to this. I understand that completely. But it is just a single data point to show that it's not nothing. It does potentially do something. And there are some other flight characteristic advantages to ducks as well in that they like to just go slowly and I also fully understand that what I was flying in the last video was obviously not Cinewhoop style flying. I was just trying to feel the quad out. I can definitely fly in a Cinewhoop style. I just just doesn't reveal very much when I'm flying in a Cinewhoop style and at the end of the day I want to have the the ability to do acro moves to be able to pull out of sketchy situations. So here is the next test that I've devised, which is very hard to, to, to read and measure, which again, it may be a throw out test to you, but hey, I'm just doing it to show you my rudimentary testing. And I'm doing this rudimentary testing because if I can't slap this thing together and go, I'm not gonna use it. If I have to delicately fine tune and fine build the thing to function for three flights and then retune it and reposition everything so it doesn't scrape and work, but I'm not gonna do it. It's just way too much work. I'm not gonna cut props down. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. I'm gonna be using existing things that exist in the real world today that don't require so much effort on my part because it makes me look really really bad in the field when I have to fiddle with my gear and I'm not ready to go all the time. It needs to work when I slap it together or I'm not going to be using it. So here's the next test that I've devised and I'm only trying to decipher whether it's worth moving forward designing things with ducts or I should just forget about them entirely and just move on with just doing very light, very protective prop guards, which is my default and which I'm probably gonna end up using as well, so or doing as well. So here's the test that I've devised. This battery that I've strapped to it is gonna be dead weight. It is 232 grams. It puts this quad, as seen here, at 498 grams. I'm gonna be using an 850 milliamp 4S battery on this thing and that's charging right now. I've already run it through one cycle just to make sure it's warmed up and now I'm charging it again and I'm gonna run it and I'm using an 850 million battery to make sure that the flight times aren't excessively long to not waste everybody's time because I don't even have the patience to sit there and figure, fiddle with this stuff. And then I'm gonna take this battery off. Oh, sorry, I'm not gonna take this battery off. I'm gonna take the prop ducts off and run the same test again with the same exact battery being charged exactly the same way. I'm going to make sure the temperature is not, at least to my hand, any warmer. I know that does make a difference, but it's not going to make a massive difference. And uh, then I'm going to do this, the test a third time with 
the prop guards on with the ducts off and adding the weight of the ducts to the quad just as dead weight just to have another benchmark of some sort and it's going to be really hard to benchmark this because I don't have analog video so I can't get my throttle readout because the DJI system doesn't have throttle readout in its system I don't think they'll ever add it but whatever it is I'm going to be looking at flight time and flight feel now flight feel is going to be very hard for me to convey so you're just going to have to look at my throttle sticks and just kind of feel it out yourself. You look at the screen, see what the quad's doing, look at my throttle stick, see how much and how long I'm holding max throttle to see if the quad can lift the weight easier. And that is essentially what I'm looking for. I'm looking for if I get more lift out of the system to manage the weight with the ducts versus without the ducts. And I don't have prop guards alone to compare this against, but we can just consider the ducks. We're just looking at the difference between ducks or no ducks right now. Maybe I'll have another option in the future. But again, this is not even good backyard science. This is bad backyard science. Here's the quad. As you see it here, it is 600 grams exactly all up weight. And it represents pretty much a typical fat Cinewhoop, which is what a lot of people are running. And uh, I'm going to be doing a couple things. First of all, I'm going to be cruising around slowly because that's tends to be a little bit more efficient than just the hover. And I'm also gonna be doing a couple of throttle pumps. I'm gonna to try to do just four. Pay attention very closely to my sticks, the throttle, and how much throttle I use and how much I hold it open and take a look at the video and see how the quad is responding to the throttle input because that's the best I got to convey flight feel and flight performance. I'm going to land at 13.5. Uh, 13.5 volts. I'm going to land. It's a 4S850 milliamp battery. I'm currently at 14.6. You can see some sort of where the throttle position is. Slowly cruising around. There are quite a few vibrations. I'm at 14 volts. Thirteen-nine. Now there's people watching me because they're really interested, which is cute because they have kids. And the kids all know me very well. And now they're coming to say hello. I'm at 13.8. Hopefully this battery runs out. Oh, I just felt some battery sag. Hopefully this battery runs out before they come and cause problems. I'm at 13.7. Starting to get down. 13.6. All right, I'm at 13.5. I'll wait till a solid 13.5 and land. There you go. I'm at a solid 13.5. Let's do a couple throttle pumps. Now 13.4. Still able, but drop down to 12.4. Drop down below 12.4. Here's the quad again, without the ducks on, and I'm actually gonna skip the test without the added weight. And so I strapped another battery to the bottom of this, an old head play battery, and the all up weight of this is actually 603 grams. Three grams more 
than the one with ducts. And so let's see how this thing performs. Again, keep a close eye on my throttle and pay attention to what the quad is responding like on screen so that you can tell, maybe get a feel for what the flight quality and flight performance might be. Ooh. Some throttle pumps. Actually, not such a significant difference. The biggest difference that I feel is that, first of all, the quad is louder, which is very interesting. It's, it's actually louder. But the biggest difference that I feel is that um, the quad wants to fly faster. It just wants to cruise around quicker. It's harder to fly around slower. And the throttle control is a lot more touchy, actually. It actually is a lot more touchy. And so with those ducks on, it's very interesting because the ducks that Stan FPV has been working on, he says that he has very carefully tuned the ducks to work a certain way. And uh, those ducks have the least amount of sticky throttle that I've ever felt. I mean, I'm not like marketing or trying to like upsell or anything. I'm just, just genuinely explaining what I feel between those ducks and other ducks. Like this quad right now is floating around a lot more and that person is watching me now but it is really like you can tell it's just sliding around it's skating around a lot more than when it had the ducks on so the ducks do tend to make it more stable at least it made this quad more stable now I'm gonna be testing my duct free design with just prop guards to see how that one does but I'm actually at 13.9 already, and I don't think I did as much throttle pumping on this. Wow. That is pretty darn impressive. I don't know. I'm going to put the flight time on screen, or the estimated flight time on screen. But again, both of these quads, same weight within 3 grams. The main difference I'm feeling is that it is definitely sliding around much faster and it is way harder to keep it flying slowly on a slow controlled cruise now I have an audience okay I'm at 3.5 I'm at, I'm at solid 3.5 wow this was definitely less flight time I think but I'll put it on screen here I'll give you the throttle pump again down to 12.5 Oh, now, oh my god, I'm actually totally dead. Oh shoot, I actually ran out of battery. I am genuinely impressed by the performance of the ducts. I was not expecting that at all. I don't think anybody was expecting that. I, I am still in the camp that I don't like the throttle performance of ducts, but maybe I am absolutely wrong in that. This test definitely proved me wrong, 110%. I, not really a convert, but there's definitely something to the ducts that I'm not appreciating, that I didn't appreciate before, and this test was exceptionally helpful in figuring out if I should continue with a development trajectory with ducts or without ducts. So a couple other things that were discussed on the previous video, a lot of people had some really, really cool ideas. One of the ideas that sort of arose is if the ducts are actually useful, maybe we should just build them into the props themselves, which I actually think is a phenomenal idea. And I'm gonna be talking to Gemfan about that now that I see that the ducts actually do have quite a significant effect that I, I can't even believe that they had this, such a significant effect. But if we had ducts built into the props themselves, that, that, like as in molded into the prop itself, the duct itself is spinning, that might be the best of all worlds. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that.
um, please comment. Tell me what you think about this test. I'm, uh, tell me if you are as surprised as I am or you think my test is complete BS. Uh, in which case, yeah, I'm sorry. I will try to do better testing, but I have proved it enough to myself that um, ducks have a place. They actually do have a place. Take care. Floss your teeth. Bye-bye.